Kitfox build update video about the Apex Kitfox 4 1200 Max Gross. If you're not into the building videos, I understand. Maybe go check out one of my flying videos. That last flying video I made with the ultralights, that was a pretty fun one. I'll put the little link to it here. If you're into build videos, this is the place to be. So let's talk about what I've done over the summer on this Kitfox 4 with the Apex. Titanium exhaust, titanium firewall. That saved me eight pounds um, compared to stainless steel. So these are recycled Yamaha R1 headers. Took two headers to make one custom airplane header. And titanium firewall saved quite a bit of weight. I'm trying to save as much as I can because this is a lot of engine for this plane. So we're trying to offset the weight wherever we can. Got the gearbox mounted. Have the radiator kind of mocked up of how it's gonna be, and we're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. Have a prototype 3D printed intake for the Apex engine, which is pretty tailored for my setup here. You can see it's pretty tight tolerances uh, to clear the oil tank and my engine mount. But I think that this probably would work on a lot of different setups. So my plan with this is to make a mold of it. I'm gonna print the negative side of that and I'm gonna vacuum bag some carbon fiber intakes. Actually, this is not on there, I can just pull it off. So, this is 3D printed. I have been running a 3D printed intake on the phaser for a while and I haven't had any issues with it. So, I think I could probably run this, but I want to make a carbon fiber version to save weight and uh, you know it'll look cool and I can do it over the winter it'd be a cool project and then maybe some of you guys would be interested in a carbon fiber intake if I make it for myself I'll be able to pump them out once I get it figured out okay so I have this stock apex oil tank on here it's this powder coated black and it fits really good it's gonna clear my cowl that we're gonna talk about in a little bit Got the oil lines connected, obviously, so I can run it. I have the stock sled harness just kind of temporarily flung over the firewall and connect. It's like a dozen connections. You got to do the run it just so I could test run it because this engine's been sitting for about a year and I just wanted to run it and get the juices flowing so it wasn't sitting another winter uh, without getting some oil circulation. So this is a mess right now. This is obviously not how it's going to be. So this does have oil in it. It does have the oil in the gearbox, obviously. I do not have the coolant in the system because I have an aluminum T that connects here for the coolant system that I'm having um, my buddy weld up because it's pretty thin aluminum, it's a little tricky. So everything's, uh, as far as liquids go, is in the engine besides the coolant. But I've just been running it for like 10 seconds at a time, so no worries there. Now if we look up at the top here, now this harness is in the way, so can't really see, but I have a, actually I'm gonna pull this intake off again. So don't mind the wiring mess. Like I said, this is all temporary just to run it for now, but I was able to find a R6 coolant um, overflow tank that fit in my little setup perfectly. Plenty of room back there. Have it um, connected to the motor mount there and it's plumbed in, so that's good. Okay, now looking back on the other side of the firewall, you can see the mess of wiring yet again from uh, me just trying to get it running. But now we're getting into the fuel lines. And the fuel lines I ran up to the firewall, obviously, to have a pass through. And these are all 3D printed clips I made just for this specific setup. I made even made clips to make a clip in position on the, uh, the airframe itself. That runs back, goes to a splitter which goes to the two fuel pumps, which are in a 3D printed mount yet again. Pretty custom for uh, this antenna mount, which actually worked out good for a fuel pump mount. And then it goes to a splitter there up to the header tank. And the header tank has the return in the center. These will be for each wing tank. These aren't connected to anything as of yet, but I'm gonna have the, uh, the low level sensor there. Uh, I'm probably going to get rid of this battery mount tray because we're not going to have the battery there. We're going to have the battery there. The battery is going to be as far back as we can because we're trying to offset this big heavy engine, right? So 
I came up with this little box. I just welded up a little battery box and this is not welded in place, but that's where it's gonna be. And the beauty of it is, is this is like a typical motorcycle size battery, but if I needed more weight, this battery is about seven and a half pounds. If I ended up needing more tail weight, I can buy a, uh, a different series battery that has the same footprint, it's just taller. And I can add like two pounds, actually up to four pounds more, depending how tall of a battery you get that would still fit in the same box. So the idea to access this is, I'm gonna have a trap door in the fabric right here. So you'd reach up, you'd undo the clip, pull your battery, voila. Put it back in. So I think that will work pretty good. I haven't done anything with the tail wheel from last time. That's still the same way it was, just mocked up, nothing really permanently installed, but it allows me to move around the shop. So that's all I've done there. So I basically did this over the summer. I'm not spending very much time on it. I have a family to take care of. That's priority, obviously. So I work on this in my spare time. I'm about a year deep in this thing. And if you've seen the other videos, the wings are built and everything. So I'm really not too far off, but I still have the panel yet to do, fabric. Um, let's see, I gotta build a cowl. I got a list here I'm reading. Turtle deck, um, all the, uh, the plexiglass roof and windows, windshield, muffler, prop. Uh, those are the main things I have in my little crap list here. So here's where it gets interesting. The plane as you see it right now is 410 pounds. So the significance of that is, is, you know, this is a lot of engine for this plane, and this has been done before on Kit Fox 4s, and some guys are like 800 pounds, some guys are 700 pounds, some guys are saying they got to put a bunch of weight in the tail, some guys don't. So I was a little concerned about that. That's why I have titanium exhaust, header, or not header, uh, firewall, trying to save weight where I can and then move all the weight back I can with the, the header tank further back, the fuel pumps further back, and the battery in the back. So I decided to weigh it, and it's 410 pounds the way you see it with this gear and everything. And I said, hey, that's pretty good. So I decided to weigh my wings and my struts and the horizontal, which is not in the plane, obviously, and basically, as you see the plane, if it was completely assembled, like the wings rigged and the tail on it, I'm 550 pounds complete right now, and it's running. Um, that's pretty good. So I, I was thinking, okay, what am I missing? And I had made a list here of some of the stuff I just uh, told you. But I think that's really only, you know, it's going to be about 100 pounds more of stuff, if I'm accurate. Um, I have about 30 pounds down for the fabric. 10 pounds for the prop, uh, five pounds for the muffler, um, all the all the plexi, I think it's gonna weigh like 20 pounds. The cowl is gonna be carbon fiber and really late. We're gonna get to that uh, in a second, but I think it's gonna be pretty lightweight the way I'm gonna do it. So if that's true, this thing's gonna be under 650 pounds, which is pretty dang good considering it's a 1200 max gross, so 550 pounds left for two people and fuel. So in theory, I could take, I'm 160. So if I took someone 200 pounds, I can still have full fuel and a little extra. That's pretty good. So if this thing's gonna weigh 650 pounds when it's completely done, ready to fly, that's really awesome. I mean, I, I can't believe it, you know? I've seen them all over the place, like I said, different weights, but this is one I'm building specifically to handle the Apex. You know, all the little things are adding up. The titanium, the tubeless tires, you know, the lightweight shocks, uh, not overbuilding anything because, you know, it's a light duty bush plane. So I'm sure there's gonna be little things I'm forgetting, but even if it's under 700 pounds, I mean, that's gonna be really good. I think it's gonna be a ripper. The cowl is gonna be yet again, a one-off custom thing just for this plane as pretty much everything I've built for this plane is. This is not a normal install. This has been done before. But a lot of these apexes are installed in retrofits. So it's a flying plane, they take the engine out, whatever it has, a 912, put an apex in, make it work around the cow it has. Well, that's not what we're doing here. We're building this around the apex. So I got the engine as far back as it can possibly go, like a quarter inch from the firewall to get that weight back. 
and I got everything pretty compact. You know, it's gonna fit in that, that firewall shape, uh, which I designed in CAD. I'm gonna throw up some CAD designs in the video now while I'm talking, you can look at it. And I think it's gonna be pretty slick. So the beauty of doing stuff in CAD is you can print out little miniature versions, like models of it to look at it. And here it is. Here's the actual cowl design I'm holding in my hand. So let's see. Can we make it look like it's on there? Yeah, look at that. Installed. So I put this little reverse hood scoop to work with that radiator, okay? So it's gonna be like an aqueduct that's gonna ram air into the radiator right there. And then it's gonna vent out. I'm gonna have formed vents that draw the air. The cowl comes down, you know, three, four inches below the firewall. And there's gonna be a flow of air, you know, from the little nostrils here down and out and also from the radiator down and out that's the idea i might have to end up angling that more but that's okay um so anyway i'm gonna print this mold in full scale and a couple pieces I'm going to carbon fiber vacuum bag it and voila i'll have this in full scale but super lightweight carbon fiber All right, so I kind of went over the stuff I've been working on over the summer. That's all cool. But let's start this thing and let's listen to it with open header. All right, let's start this baby up. Take my little exhaust plug off here. Oh, a little side note. Because I'm the way I am, I'm thinking about, you know, obviously having the muffler here. But in between the header and the muffler, I'm thinking about having an electronic cutoff valve. So when I pull in the fly-ins, it will sound a little something like this. so that wraps up this video hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think in the comments and i'll see you in the next one